welcome to Nailing It Down, a product of Varm Blog. Calling it a product is kind of weird, since we're not really producing commodities here. Um, but, nonetheless, um, we are here today to talk about heuristics, because I've talked about some general debate heuristics before, and I realized that I hadn't really covered the topic. And part of the problem with heuristics is it's a very broad topic. Like hermeneutics, which is how you interpret text, or semiotic patterns of inquiry. Heuristics are kind of broad. We have to deal with priority heuristics, social heuristics, psychological heuristics, neuro heuristics, um, logical heuristics. We talked about like heuristics of suspicion and charity before in the past. But a heuristic is any approach to so the problem solving or self discovery that employs any method that is not guaranteed to be op optimal or rational. And rational here is going to be defined in terms of guided by reasons, either in syllogistic or probabilistic logic. All right. Now, rationality itself, there's many versions of rationality. And in fact, the limitations on rationality emerges out of heuristic studies. So when we talk about, say, bound logic or constraint or bounded rationality, which are which are constraints that can lead to negative outcomes, they're actually rooted in a lot of heuristics. The reason why heuristics are useful is why they are not optimal, perfect, or are, are necessarily optimally rational, they're sufficient for most immediate tasks, for short-term goals, and for approximation. When finding the optimal solution is not rational or impractical due to time constraints or precision constraints, heuristic methods can be used to speed up the process of finding a satisfactory solution. Heuristics, then, are mental shortcuts that reduce the cognitive or social load of making a decision. And many kinds of basic heuristics that we talk about are, for example, trial and error, rules of thumbs, educated guesses, or like I said, debate and social heuristics, such as heuristic of charity, heuristic of trust, or heuristic of suspicion. All right. The reason why we call those latter three heuristics is they are not optimally speaking rational. It's just an orientation that you find to be useful for certain things. The most fundamental hu heuristic is trial and error. You don't actually find truth through trial and error, uh, which can be used from natural nuts and bowls to finding variables and algebra problems. In mathematics, some common heuristics involve visual representation, additional assumptions, for backward reasoning or simplification. Um, so that's where the idea of heuristic comes from. We have um, things to, to solve a problem, and we have many ways to solve it mathematically, right? I mean, this literally goes to math. And there are heuristics that are not perfectly speaking optimal, but work. A lot of, for example, your multiplication and division tricks, those are heuristic guides. They are deduced from trial and error a lot of the times, or from quick reasoning, or from reasoning that you might not even understand correctly why it works, just that it works. And maybe it doesn't work in every case, but it works in enough of them that, it's, that the risk of error is so low that you're going to use a heuristic judgment. All right. So if we look at George uh, Polya's 1945 book, How to Solve It, he actually ta talks about heuristics. So we can draw from architecture, top down view, side view, front view to figure out where the problems might be. None of these are optimal. All right. You're limiting your perspective on that. Um, you can work backwards, a.k.a. did, you know, deduce from results. That's, again, not optimal. But you can you can uh, 
you can use that to figure out the problem. If the problem is an abstract problem, you can try a couple of concrete examples and then induce back from that. Or you can try to solve a more general problem first, then to try to apply that to a specific problem. These are all heuristics, but they're not perfectly optimal ways to find the answer in mathematics. Now, in psychology, heuristics are more complicated because heuristics are socially learned and maybe even evolved. These psychological heuristics can be explained while people make decisions, come to judgments, and solve problems in ways that are fairly consistent, but not optimally rational. These uh, typically come into play when people face complex, po complex problems or incomplete information. For example, going off the consensus of experts is actually a heuristic. It is not a means for truth. You cannot test truth with the consistence of experts. It's a heuristic because... Not trusting the consensus of experts usually leaves you with no other basis on which to decide what legitimate grounds are on. Similarly, ethos appeals in the Aristotelian sense, so appeals to credibility, are heuristics. Right? You have a history of trusting one kind of source or one kind of person who's a source or looking for things in a person who's a source, such as they have expertise in the field, etc. And you use that to deduce the likelihood that their information is correct and then it might conform with your priors. But there's all kinds of heuristics and these heuristics lead to systemic errors and cognitive biases. Because while they work, they're not necessarily correct. By the way, most informal logical fallacies are negative heuristics. So like you can come to a conclusion um, that's correct off of fallacious logic, um, unless it is formally fallacious logic, in which case you, you, it, they are never correct. Like, and I could talk about what that means, but, um, but for example, making an ad hominem attack does not discredit a truth claim. It does, however, discredit a claim if the ad hominem is causal to a factual statement. Right. So just because someone attacks somebody and it doesn't seem relevant, that doesn't mean that their attack or their deduction of truth is wrong. It just means that the two statements aren't relevant to each other. So that is a negative heuristic. We know a lot of informal logical fallacies are just guidelines for, for what is likely to be bad logic. Ad hominem is a particularly interesting one, though, because there are cases in which the person's standpoint is actually relevant to what they're claiming, and then there can be a causal link, or at least a correlative link, which means that the argument is not actually irrelevant. And that's a tough one. The study of heuristics was really picked up by psychologists Amos Tversky and Daniel Kahneman, um, uh, but was originally introduced by the Nobel laureate Herbert A. Simon. Simon's primary object of research was uh, was figuring out what he called bounded rationality. I'm going to get back to that. The, he coined the term satisficing, which no solution would, uh, when people seek, seek solutions or accept choices and judgments that are good enough for purposes where they could be optimized but are not likely to be optimized because optimization is either socially prohibited or takes too long. Um. And so you can think of these heuristics as a kind of adaptive toolbox in which we have developed different kinds of answers to problems when we can't really truly figure out how to optimally solve the problem, like actually solve the direct problem at hand, but solve it indirectly. Or we have a bunch of biases and whatnot that actually serve us pretty well in coming up with initial um, impressions are functioning within a system, but which may really lead to some severe problems um, when combined with other kinds of processes, be they social or psychological. Um, given the fact that the cognitive load of anything we do, like the amount of information we have to process, it, we always want to reduce it. 
this is why you often see people who want to deal with overdetermined problems by reducing the problems to a singular effect. Technically speaking, such a reduction is not optimal. Often, most particularly problems in complex systems have complex answers. They have multiple causalities, multiple chains lead to a particular event, and they happen in time, and the different things triggering can be complicated in time as well. So what does that mean for a heuristic? But that means that to simplify the amount of information or the number of variables we are processing, we'll try to reduce it down to something that can get us a good enough answer or approximate a cause. But most of these causes are, prox are approximated. Often the cause isn't really found this way. So when we talk about, say, race reductionism or class reductionism, those are attempts to approximate a cause by a sociological explanation, class or race, where we try to limit all of the factors down to one cause. Um, intersectionality is an attempt to recomplicate that by looking at multiple causes for social conditions. Right. And it came out in terms of law. It was a way to figure out if there are multiple um, things causing presidential action in terms of lawsuits. That's where it comes from. But those, again, are all heuristics. And they're abstract heuristics at that. And the reason why I'm covering this is because we're going to need to talk about psychological heuristics, her, um, debate heuristics, bounded rationality and a lot of other problems without just dipping into uh, the various kinds of jargons that sociologists and Marxists and other kinds of people use to talk about this. So, for example, ideology, in the kind of real sense, is the structures of society and how you socially reproduce yourself, which leads one to make decisions and bound one's rationality based off of priors that conform with our relations and modes of production are the way we reproduce ourselves in the world. So for example, we assume that markets are natural. We assume that most societies have operated under them. We assume that most societies have been hierarchical in a, in a way that reflects post-agricultural societies. And actually, if you study anthropology and other things are true. Right. But those are assumptions that are bounded by what we see right now, because we assume that right now has some basis in historicity because it exists. Right. Um, this is a, a presentism bias, too. And often we deduce from now prior things or things about the past, which confirm to our conceptions of the way we structure society now, which may be completely foreign to that time or place. Right. That's a kind of botch heuristic. And that's how a lot of ideology works. Like it is a way to explain why things are in terms of the way things are now. Now, I've talked about the history of the term ideology and its genealogical uh, things in another sh uh, show called the um, Theorizing with a Hammer. I uh, don't know if that's available anywhere, so I might remake that video. But this is the beginning of a series when we talk about different kinds of heuristics and how it might limit the way we think. And I'm going to try to also take other ways of talking about this, you know, the way socialists talk about this, the way modern economists talk about this, et cetera, and show how they parallel in this kind of ad hoc logic. I hope you had felt found this helpful. And if you like more like this, like and subscribe, and you can find the Patreon where you can get the audio of all the solo shows. You get early audio of all the interviews <coughs> uh, and several shows that are just for Patreon subscribers. Thank you and have a nice day.